This is Ronald Dilsta II, and I welcome you to the Ronald Dilsta II Podcast. With degrees in theater, film, entertainment business, and creative writing, I've been extremely blessed with opportunities to produce media, digital films, commercials, music videos, and stage plays. Through these experiences, I've had the wonderful pleasure of meeting and working with some amazing talent in the entertainment industry. My goal for this show is to share their stories and experiences while learning about the challenges and obstacles they may have faced while going after their dreams and ultimately succeeding. While serving as a college professor and running my own production company, Ronald Dilsa Second Productions, I'm always seeking for ways to educate, encourage, and inspire the whole entire world. Welcome to the Ronald Dilsa Second Podcast. Welcome, welcome, everyone, to another episode of the Ronald Dilsa Second Podcast. I hope and pray that you are doing well. Everything is well and blessed on your end. Uh, it's been a really busy season on this end, uh, but we've been we've been getting through. You know, with the grace of God, we've been getting through. So it's been uh, busy, but God has been getting us through. And ah. Uh, you see God in a different way when you're going through certain things in life and you're just trying to hold on. Um, and, you know, you just continue to push forward and trust God. Right. Which is what this episode is all about. Right. Standing still. That's the name of this one. Standing still. So welcome to a, another wonderful episode. Just want to remind you some quick updates. I've been trying to uh, promote course. We're coming close to that season. We probably up to maybe about four to five more uh, podcast episodes for this season. All right. And I go by the each year. It's just pretty much a different season, even though we don't call it season one, season two, it's just season one. All right. Um, but yes, we have a few more episodes that we're going to do. And then of course um, we're going to wrap up this year uh, with the Ronald Dill second podcast and prepare for what's coming next. All right. So God family of business podcast for those that know uh, the wonderful show, me and my wonderful wife, Monique Diltz, uh, host together. Uh, will be coming back this fall. So we are super excited to bring it back with its new um, scheduled time of the year, the fall now, because usually it's the beginning of the year, but we're going to bring it back for the fall now uh, for the first time. So, uh, so yeah, so that's super exciting. So we're going to, you know, prepare. I'm going to take a little time off, hopefully get into some writing. I need to get back into my writing. Um, and we're going to prepare for God family business to hopefully release uh, this September. All right. So that's the goal. Um, Monique Dilt's podcast. I kind of talked about that a little bit here and there, but our goal is to release uh, the Monique Dilt's podcast in January, right? January for the first time, we're going to release my wife's podcast and it's going to be more geared towards health and wellness um, and just how you can live your better your better self, your better life um, just by, you know, changing the way you eat and different things like that. So we're going to cover so many topics when it comes to health. It's super exciting. Uh, but yes, be on the lookout for that. Uh, we're looking again for the beginning of the new year. All right. Um, dropping that wonderful uh, new podcast. So we're busy. We're staying busy. Right. And staying busy does help. As we all know, it helps you in those seasons where things are going a little slower than usual. Uh, those seasons where you're waiting on God to move you forward. Things like this keeps us busy. All right. And it makes that time go by so much faster. All right. Trust me. I know. All right. I've been in this season for quite some time now, and I've been just finding ways that I can share uh, more of what God has, has done already in my life and also what God is doing in my life. All right. So stay busy. Find things to keep you busy. 
There's projects that you desire to do now in this waiting season. It's a good time to start writing that stuff down and and start getting yourself ready because, you know, it's a big question that I usually ask. If God was to release the money today for that project, will you be ready? All right. And a lot of us won't be ready. Right? I, I get nervous just thinking about it. <laughs> a lot of us won't be ready. So it's time to prepare ourselves. And I always talk about you can't just prepare yourself, um, you know, physically, but you got to re- uh, prepare yourself spiritually. You got to prepare yourself mentally. Um, you got to prepare yourself. You got to start working on you so you'll be ready. All right. So now is a great time to start thinking about that and, and making an effort to move forward and prepare yourself. OK, so I want to encourage you on that. So back to our wonderful topic. Right. We have the wonderful topic standing still. All right. Standing still is our wonderful topic for this wonderful uh, session. Um, now, we did what was the brutal weight was our last episode that we did together. You know, where I was basically talking, of course, we had some wonderful interviews um, that came right after. But standing still is kind of along the same lines as uh, the brutal weight. Um, And so it's kind of, you know, around those same guidelines. Um, And so you just kind of consider like, okay, well, standing still, um, the brutal weight. And pretty much pretty much the same in a sense, you know, Um, but I look at them totally different. I look at them totally different. Um, And the reason is because, you know, when you think about the brutal weight, you're actually looking, um, you know, you're looking at everything um, like, wow, I'm waiting. I'm waiting on God. Um, I'm waiting. You know, it's a brutal, it's brutal weight. You're more so looking at everything um, more so like, wow, this is actually tough, you know, in a sense, because you call it, we call it brutal because it is brutal sometimes, not all the times, but it it is definitely brutal um, most of the times. Um, But when standing still comes into play, standing still is more so saying, hey, I'm going to stand firm. I'm going to trust God is going to see me through and I'm just going to stand still until God, until God is ready to move me forward. All right. So that's pretty much what standing still means to me. Is standing in place no matter what happens, no matter what the enemy throws at me, I'm going to stand still and I'm going to wait on God um, to see me through. And I've been learning to do this. I'm not a professional with this. (laughs) It's not an easy thing to do. All right. And it takes a lot of practice. It takes a lot of dedication. It takes a lot of faith um, to stand still, to um, wait on God, to just let go and let God take over that situation. All right. I've been through so many different things in life and I'm, you know, I've had to learn no matter how much I stress about it. No, no matter how much I um, get anxiety about it, God always take care of it. All right. If it's meant for it to be taken care of, he always take care of it. And if it's not meant to take care of it, it doesn't affect me either way, (laughs) one way or the other. All right. And so I've had to learn that and I'm still learning. It's not something that just you just the more you trust God, the more easier it gets for you to trust God. And the more God will start to show you on that journey that, hey, you can trust me with all things, not just with some things, with all things. Um, It's been oftentimes that my wife and I on our journey and just, you know, going through the things that we have been through since becoming one husband and wife, also becoming, you know, parents. You know, we've been through quite a journey and we've realized that, you know, when we let go and just trust God with the situation, he's not going to just take care of that situation. He's going to take care of all situations because he wants you to trust him with everything, not just that one situation, but with everything. All right. So that's something that we all have to learn how to do more of. So in opening in this season, God currently has me in. I'm learning the importance of standing still. All right. We often go through circumstances in life where when something goes wrong, we're trying to fix it. Right. We're trying to fix it. That's our first reaction. Right. We're trying to. How can I fix this situation? Um, How can I take care of this? All right. Think about if you lose your job today, if you was to lose your job. All right. I'm not going to speak that over you. But what if you were to lose your job? What would be your first reaction? 
Okay, how can I get another job? All right, that's just a normal reaction. Okay, I I, I lost my job. How can I get another one? So check this out. I got a, I got a nice story for, to tell you. This happened to me. All right, this happened. The same exact situation happened to me. So a few years ago, um, y'all know I love my stories. A few years ago, I was a substitute teacher. All right, um, I was a substitute teacher. To believe it or not, for Orange County Public Schools, um, loved it. It was a company. That was separate, that was independent from Orange County, but they pretty much used this company to basically um, bring in their subs. And um, it was an amazing company. You know, um, they, I love the system they had in place for us. Uh, we pretty much can go on the computer and basically if you're in their system, you go on the computer as a substitute teacher and you basically see all the positions that are opening open um, for the next day and, and sometimes for the remainder of the week. And so I would go in there if I had a slow week. I'm like, okay, I can work here all week. The teacher's out all week and I would take that position. All right. So naturally with that is first come first serve. So you have to get in there. So I used to just kind of get in there early uh, when I can and and try to make sure I was covered for the week. Um, And so with 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 this position as a substitute, this gig, I was able to. do a lot of my production work, you know, because I wasn't like fully committed. You know, I didn't, if it was a day that I had something going on, I didn't have to work that day. I could just, Hey, I'm not going to look for a, you know, a gig for this particular day because I want to go out and shoot this project. Or maybe I can't shoot this whole week because I'm working on a film. And so that gig allowed me to do a lot of things. And as a sub, you're not necessarily required to do so much stuff. You're basically there to cover the assignments for that teacher while they're out. <clears throat> so you pretty much are just basically sitting in place in a sense. I wouldn't necessarily call it babysitting, but you're there to just cover that teacher. So it's time is downtime that you get to pretty much work on some things that you may need to work on while the students are working on their project for the day. Um, and so that was just, it was very, it was very nice. Now I wouldn't say the pay is the best. <laughs> all right. Um, I, I want to remember, I think we did have benefits um, for this particular gig, but the pay wasn't the best, you know, it was just something that you would get, you know, and I'll tell you, it was pretty much 75 to a hundred a day, depending on what school you were at. All right. Um, And sometimes they look at it more so if you're at a certain school and usually it's those schools in the black neighborhoods, the black communities. um, Some of those schools would be more. okay, because they 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 figure that you may have to deal with more. I'll be real with you. Those were my favorite schools. You know what I'm saying? Because I just felt like I was right at home. You know what I'm saying? Um, And so when I would get those schools, I was just like, oh, this is a great opportunity for me to go and really connect with the students there. Um, And, you know, and those were my favorite. And of course, I'm getting paid more. Um, And so but that's how this system worked. And so I'm doing this gig and I probably did this for about I think it was about four years. Um, And I did it off and on because um, during the time I went back to school, I went to get my film degree um, at Full Sail, actually. And so I was actually um, doing the subbing on the side when things were slow. But, you know, the program was pretty, you know, pretty busy. As those that know about Full Sail, um, it was a pretty busy program. So it was a lot of times that I didn't have time to actually take on gigs. Um, But it was great because I was already in a system. So once I finished my my film degree, guess what? Until things started picking up, I went right back into that position um, and was able to just have that kind of schedule that I could control. And so, but yeah, it was a great, great gig. I eventually got to the point where um, I saw a gig that had opened up. I had really got connected um, everywhere I go. I would get connected. That's just me, my personality, and just wanting to connect with everyone and, and just kind of get to know the system at each school. Um, and so this particular school that I um, was connected with, I did. Um, I subbed at this school a lot to the point that teachers would actually call me to take on their position. They would call me to make to see if I was available and um, could take on their class for a, a day or two, you know, if they had to be out. And so that was pretty cool, you know, for this gig. And so this uh, particular school is a middle school. Um, they had a PE coach position that was pretty much an ongoing substitute position. And um, they were pretty much at the point it was brought to my attention that they were after I had sub for a while. They were like, yo, 
um, this position is available. You should be applying for it. Did you get your certification? And all this stuff. And I'm, like, my, I'm just like, wait, certification? <laughs> oh, shoot. You know what I'm saying? So it was just one of those times I had to kind of rush and get things done. But um, yeah, they allowed me to interview. I interviewed for the position. I applied for it and interviewed. Um, probably one of the, I'd say it was a little nervous, nerve wracking because it was, it was probably like, I think it's probably one of the biggest interviews because I had, it was probably like six to seven people from the school that were in this interview. So I'm just sitting across from the table. They all, you know, admired me who I was, uh, but they were just trying to make sure I was perfect fit for the position, you know? Uh, so yeah, so that was just kind of like, whoa, okay, okay. So did the interview, ended up getting hired for this position. I was on cloud nine. Um, of course, naturally, I, I didn't go to school to be a PE coach, you know, <laughs> uh, but it was a fun position just to get my feet wet again. Um, and just kind of learning that system, you know, of course, the pay was a lot more. You're now on salary. Uh, your benefits are better. So, you know, you're you're moving forward, you know, and in a great direction. So I was pumped. Um, I was able to have more funds to do more, you know, for myself, as well as to put more into the productions that I wanted to do as well. And so I wrote that gig out the remaining of the school year, about two weeks, you know, before the school year ended. Um, I get a call, you know, from the principal and basically the school is making cuts. You know, unfortunately, this is some things that you have to deal with depending on what schools you're at. So they're making cuts. They got to cut back on some, you know, some teachers and some some finances and stuff. And so, of course, I was a new hire. So I was one of the ones on the chopping block. All right. And so I get called to the office and I'm just like, ah, you know, this it's very, you know, it's kind of like you don't know what to expect. So I go in there and um, the principal was really nice, amazing principal at the time. Um, she told me exactly what was going on, that they had to make cuts because I was a new hire. Of course, I was one of the ones that um, was up against, you know, um, this situation that they had to do. I had to be one of the ones that would get cut. And so totally understand it was business. Totally understand. In the back of my mind as a faith man, I'm thinking to myself, well, God gave me this position. God really blessed me with this position. I was so happy to get this position compared to what I was making as a sub to now. I'm like, I can't go back to substitute teaching. That's for sure. So what I'm doing, right? I'm already thinking in my mind while the principal is talking to me like, yo, I got to find a new gig. I got to find a new position even before leaving the meeting, you know? Um, but the meeting went, you know, it went well. I, um, you know, I just kind of took it, you know, it's like I didn't take it to heart like most people would have. I just kind of looked at it. Well, God gave me this position. Either he has a better position for me or this is just a door he wants to close. And that's just the way I took it. And I was very proud of myself because I just knew like God had something better for me. So let me go see if I can find out what it is. So right away. That evening when I got home from work, I'm already online looking for a new position. That's just how we are, right? That's how we build. So I'm already trying to fix this problem. Like, well, that position is expired uh, by the end of the school year. So I need to start looking for a new gig. And so that's what I did. I got on the li online and started looking at um, positions that were available in the Orange County system. And so um, ended up, kid you not, I saw a lot of drama positions. I saw a lot of TV production positions and I was just blown away. Like I had never seen like when I originally was looking for jobs that were geared towards my degrees, I didn't find anything. Everything was taken. And these are usually the fun positions that those that go to school for that, they are going to get those positions right away. And so it was just refreshing to see that so many positions were open at this point and it had to be at least five or six different positions. And so I just started applying. I applied for every last one of those positions. That's just how I was in that moment. I was like, I'm gonna apply for all of them to see what happens. Now, at this point, let me get you a little history about everything. So when I originally graduated from the University of Florida with a theater degree, I came back home just trying to figure out what was going to be the next move, the next step. Um, I did um, this this program. It was kind of like a summer program. It's kind of similar to Boys and Girls Club. It was called Wreck and Roll. And so I was a camp counselor there. So that was kind of like my first gig right out of college. You know, my mom hooked me up with the people um, that she knew and, and ended up they ended up getting me a position. So I was right away doing this camp counseling stuff. All right. 
through that camp counseling, um, sometimes over the summer, they would have, um, you know, these particular summers I was there, they had some teachers from Full Sail come and give our students, you know, um, in the camp, our camp students, to give them kind of like a little spill about production and different things that they were doing at Full Sail. And they actually had an opportunity to make a small project. So that's how I kind of, I had already heard about Full Sail while I was at Florida. But now I'm seeing people from Full Sail come in to teach these camps. And so I was really drawn in and fascinated about Full Sail through this. And these teachers, of course, when I shared that info, they were encouraging me to check it out more. It's a great fit. It's a great place to be. And so naturally, eventually, after two camps, two summers of this, you know, going through this, I said, OK, I'm going to check it out even more. And we were able to move forward. And and I enrolled in film school, kid or not, you know, after that last summer session. And so um, in this season, though, um, as a camp counselor, also substitute teaching, um, I was meeting so many people. I got connected, of course, when I got my full time gig, I got connected with with their Boys and Girls Club through the school. I was able to connect with them. I, I was able to get more funds, you know, working for them as well. So it was it was a really nice fit for me. All right. In this season. Um, but, yeah, to lose that gig, I, I just went to the to the right to the computer and started looking. All right. And so I ended up starting getting calls and it, it just happened so quickly. Um, the calls started coming in. They saw my resume. Um, they really love my application. So I probably got about, I want to say, two to three interviews um, that, that, that um, of three schools that were interested in me. I think two were middle school and one was a high school. All right. And so right away I did the first two interviews. You know, they were I felt they were OK. Some I felt kind of like, ah, I don't know if I'm really feeling it. One of them. Um, but they, you know, they went pretty well, you know, for what they were naturally just trying to fill the school out. And that was the cool thing about substitute teaching. You go to all these different schools um, and you're able to sub at all the different schools. So you already know what school is a good fit for you uh, and how they do, you know, how they handle business on that particular campus. And so um, in the interviews, you know, I was just pretty cool. It's like this would be a cool dream position for me. Um, I want to say I probably, you know, geared towards was, you know, the high school, I think was probably was the the one that I kind of really wanted to do. Um, and so to piggyback, I just remembered my thought. Um, so when I first graduated from Florida, I came back home, connected with my drama teacher. So while I was doing the camp stuff. I connected with my drama teacher from high school. OK, because that was kind of like my, my my drama mama caller, you know, because she was the one that kind of basically introduced me to the theater and just took me pretty much under her wing and showed me the ropes of everything. OK, um, and we did a lot of great plays, you know, on my time there as well at Evans High School. Um, and so I was able to go back home, uh, connect with her. I wanted to see what type of shows they were doing. I had a theater degree now, so I was just really trying to see where I could help out um, if she needed a sub. Guess what? She would call me and I would be right there no matter what. Um, and of course, this was a hundred dollar school, of course. Um, and so that was really great because I knew I was taken care of, you know, financially as well. And so during this season, my drama teacher was really considering, um, you know, I think it was like halfway through the school year. She was considering stepping away from 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 um, drama. You know, she wanted to retire. You know what I'm saying? And so I was just like, what? And she was like, I would feel very comfortable uh, moving forward, especially in the middle of the school year run, if you take on this position. And I'm just like, I'm just, my, my mind is just blown. Like one, that she's retiring, but two, that she trusts me to take on this position. And so naturally, of course, I was like, heck yeah, I, I, it would be an honor. It would be a dream um, to take on this position. Of course, I didn't know anything about what it took to take on this position. I remember the times that we had and, and all the different things that she had to know and have knowledge of, like building the sets and different things like that, setting the budgets and, and putting that budget to play for each show. It was a lot to kind of figure that out. Um, during this time, unfortunately, we had a principal that I don't think really supported the drama department as much. So that was already a red flag for me. So I had to come into this position 
in the middle of the school year and encourage, of course, my students um, that it's other things that we can do to kind of keep the fire burnt. So I had to figure out a creative way to keep the fire burnt for them. And the way we would do that, I started introducing them to film production within the theater. So they had the theater side of me, but they also had film production. And so we just would come up with creative ways to do projects using film. And I had a film camera at the time, and that's pretty much what we would do. Um, And so we just pretty much came up with ways to do like, different skits that they can do and showcase um, different like um, like if I wrote like maybe I wrote like a short film, like I ended up writing a short film about the drama department. We ended up um, doing that project. You know what I'm saying? So I came up with creative ways to basically um, keep them motivated, but give them something to do to finish out the school year, a big project. And so that's pretty much what we had did in that season. The end of that school year, it came to the point and I had did my um, certif- my pre-certification. So this is basically where you get like two to three years to you know finish up your certification. They give you like a pre-certification that you can pretty much move forward and take on a position. And so I had that pre-certification just to take on that drama position. And so, but after that school year, I had my mindset, of course, to go into film school. So they ended up moving on with someone else for that position. I went to film school. And so... That was pretty much how everything ended up transpiring and happening. Uh, Fast forward, of course, getting this position at Accord Middle. Now, at this point, because film school was two years for me, at this point, my certification is pretty much at that point where it's um, it's expired now. And so basically, I'm having to go and just kind of make up the work that I should have done, (laughs) but I was in film school. And so I can take on this new position. And so that was a big question that came up in a lot of those interviews. And so I had to explain that, you know, what what happened in that. I went to film school and all that great stuff. And so some of the schools, of course, had requirements that they wanted me to fulfill when it came to that. Um, So, of course, that was one thing that could have been um, possibly a red flag for them um, is the fact that I still need to get certified. And so but I still moved forward. I did all the interviews that I needed to do. Um, my mom ended up bringing this opportunity to me that she had learned about. She heard that Robinswood middle school, which is the middle school I went to for my seventh and eighth grade year. Um, they had a position opening up where it was basically, um, computer testing. And I'm just like computer testing. Oh, that seemed pretty chill, pretty cool. But I'm just thinking to myself, that's not like it could get boring really quick, (laughs) you know, especially someone like me who's very active, Um, you know, the drama degree, the theater degree. I'm just like, I'm not trying to do no computer testing course. But my mom was like, you should still apply. You know, you never know what can happen. So I was like, okay, I'll apply. I still have a couple other. I think at this point I have one other interview that was at a middle school for drama teacher position. I was like, all right, what, what can it hurt? I'm going to apply for it. And so I applied for this position at Robinswood and I ended up receiving a call. I want to say it could have been easily the next day or a couple of days away. And it's the assistant principal at the time um, that is just um, talking to me about my resume and just, of course, the position that I applied for. And in this phone call, she's telling me, straight up that, hey, we're interested in bringing the drama position back, uh, the drama club back to to Robinswood. We're interested in also having someone to take over the TV production position. Is this something that would interest you? Because we would prefer to have you in those positions. I'm just like, look at God in this situation. I had to hold up like, hold on now, hold on. <laughs> I said, okay, this is, this is great. This sound amazing. This, the, I'll be able to use both of my degrees. I said, let's move forward with the interview. And, um, and she set me up. We moved forward to the interview um, and we'll see, you know, um, but I was just already like so pumped about this. And I don't know if that, um, that conversation happened um, on the phone or if it happened, Um, at the school during the actual interview. But I just know I was just so pumped about this one returning back home to my middle school. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? That I actually walked through these hallways and uh, to be able to teach two subjects that I have actually had degrees for and that I'm very passionate about. All right. So this was just mind blowing. So did the interview. All right. Interview went great. It was more so them showing me pretty much 
the classroom I would have. And I mean, they gave me probably the biggest classroom on campus. They were buttering me up, buttering me up. Uh, they wanted to kind of show me kind of the school and just how everything operates, the TV productions lab area uh, where we would shoot the morning announcements and things like that. So it was just a really great interview. Um, at the end of the interview, um, I was told, hey, I know this is where you're supposed to be. I know you are an archer. Um, you have to, of course, you know, make that decision. But I know this is where you're supposed to be, where you belong. And I was like, OK, all right. And, you know, I told him I was like, I have one more interview I need to do before I make my decision. And then that's when they just kind of like, I know you're an archer. I know you're supposed to be here, but go ahead and do that interview. Just let us know as soon as possible, because we're trying to fill this position, these positions. And I was like, OK, cool, cool. And so I went to that other interview and kid you not, it went well, but it wasn't nothing like the experience I had at Robinswood. None of the interviews were like the experience I had at Robinswood. So it was almost like God was flashing the lights like this is where you're supposed to be, my son. This is the opportunity that I want you in. I moved you from that opportunity so you could find this one. And what a mysterious way. He actually hid it. Now I'm talking about this. God hid this opportunity, made it a computer testing opportunity so I could apply for that through my mom. And then, of course, end up landing a position that they want to bring back, that they saw I would have been I am the best candidate for just because of my resume. And I was just blown away. So after that other interview, I ended up calling Robinswood, taking on that position. I wanted it. And um, the rest was history after that. Right. <laughs> but look at this. After accepting that position, guess what my current job does, right? The one that I'm currently working at as a PE coach, they try to offer me my position back. Look at, I'm just like, look at God in that, right? Look at God. I'm up here with stressing now. Like, man, lost my job. I know God got something better for me, but you know, we still stress. Even though we know God is going to take care of it, we still be stressing for no reason. So here I am stressing, trying to find another position. God blesses me with several opportunities that I can apply for, but then blessed me with one that was saved just for me. All right. Saved it just for me. OK. And then not only did he do that, but the, the 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 job that was letting me go found out, hey, I heard you had this opportunity at Robinswood. where they knew all the details, too. I heard you, you're considering taking on this position or you already considered it. Well, we want you before you fully commit. We want you to know that we're considering offering your position back. And I'm just like, well, <laughs> you know, I mean? I'm just like. Hey, I'm teaching drama and TV productions. I don't care what the opportunity is. I'm going to take that one. All right. And so, but that's what happened. I moved forward and it was the best decision that I ever made when it came to that. And what a story, what a testimony that I'm able to share with the world because of that. So that is the God we serve. All right. And it doesn't stop there. Y'all ready for more? It doesn't stop there. So during this time at Robinswood, I had such a blast. Um, of course, they work with me to get my certification done. I was able to at this point, I think that window cleared where I can do like the temporary certification again. So it's just like God had set everything up, you know, intentionally, you know, just so I could move forward and it, it'd be a smooth transition. And so I fell right in love with everything that was going on there um, and just the opportunity to work, you know, with the students that I was working with um, and just working on subjects that I was very passionate about. So it was just super amazing. So did my certification. I did everything I needed to do um, for that. It took about two years, I want to say, and wasn't cheap. <laughs> it wasn't cheap. I want to say it cost about a thousand dollars for this thing, mind you. Thank God for the for the salary now. Right. Um, and so it, it took a lot of time, effort um, and finances to do that. And of course, on top of that, you had to do all the testing, you know, so you had your your testing that you had to do to complete the certification. So. Um, so, yeah, you had Jeanette text. Um, I'm calling Jeanette. I know that's college term. But you had like general education stuff that you had to test on. You had to test on the subject that you want to teach as well. So drama. Six through 12 was what I had to test on. And so it was an experience. And I kid you not, believe it or not, 
the first time taking the drama, I'm not really the, I'll tell you straight, I'm not really the best tester anyway. All right. But they really prepared me for this. I had some of my wonderful colleagues who were looking out for me, um, gave me some test examples to kind of help me and, 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 and do well on these tests. Um, when it came to the drama, of course, I was the one doing the drama. So this is my subject area. So I ended up didn't know what to study for this thing. So I studied pretty much all my drama theater books. I had took some books, you know, um, that I had access to uh, when I did do the drama position. I had access to a book that I I was able to keep. Um, And so I was going through that book, trying to learn everything, get to the test, you all. And I ended up missing this test by three points. You know how how mad I was three points. Like, I'm like, are you serious? So I had to retake the test because of three points. And so that was kind of devastating. But the second time around, I did pass flying colors. I made sure I was prepared. I knew what to expect. Um, but yeah, that was really hard. Three points, you know, I'm missing this, you know, it was just like, I can't, I can't even believe it. Three points. Um, so yeah, so got my certification. Now check this out. So while I'm doing my certification, I'm telling everybody, I'm telling everybody at Robinswood. Now I'm, I don't have my first year, so I'm feeling myself now. I'm telling everybody, watch how God do this. Watch how I get my certification done. God is going to move me on. I just know that's the God I serve. And I'm, I'm speaking this now, speaking this to existence. I'm just like, watch, watch what happened. I know how God works in my life. I'm just like, watch this. I'm going to do all this work, get the certification done. It's going to be time to move on. I kid you not. Got my certification done right at the end of getting my certification done. It was like, okay, time to celebrate. I'm super excited. That's done. I don't have to worry about that anymore. I can just move forward. I'm certified. A lot to celebrate for that. I decide that, hey, maybe I should look at possibly getting a master's because I was still, you know, trying to get my productions up. We we were doing some plays here and there. We were doing some short films when we could. Um, it was growing more because now I had more funds in the bank now because of these because of my new job. Um, and so I started uh, looking into uh, getting my master's and I wanted to do it in business. You know, my mom was like, Hey, maybe you should do, you know, try to go back to school and get some business classes in just to kind of help you with the financial side of things when it comes to doing your productions and just the, the business side. And I thought that was a great idea. So I started looking into it. Um, found out of course, full sale had an entertainment business masters. And so I ended up applying, um, for that and got in and, and started that journey. So I'm, Right out of, out of completing a certification, which took two years, I jumped right into doing a master's. So I was just like, I'm, I think I'm getting too comfortable with this educational side of things. And so, but that's what I did. I jumped right into that master's and it was pretty much at the end of the school year. I was like, I can start it and I can have the summer pretty much to kind of get used to the busyness of the work that I'll be doing for the master's. And so about a week out, Uh, We're getting close to a week out. I'm working for the Boys and Girls Club there, excuse me, Boys and Girls Club uh, through Robinswood. I mean, I'm just, you know, taking every opportunity I can, you know, just to make that extra money and um, also to do some things I enjoy. Because a lot of the students that were in that club, we had the drama club. um, We had an entrepreneur club that they um, encouraged me to create while I was there. And so it was just really cool to see these students that were very passionate about these topics and just wanting to learn. Um, And so I was able to have a a great hand in that. And it was just super amazing to work with them. Um, And so at the end of this, um, this last, it's probably like a week out, you know, school is about to get ready to get out. I'm excited. I'm, you know, don't finish my, my certification. I'm just like, yo, I'm, I'm living now. And now I'm doing my master's. And so I'm feeling really good, feeling myself, right? Feeling myself. So kid you not, okay, a couple of days out from school ending, I get a phone call, a phone call from Full Sail now. I'm like, why is Full Sail calling me? Now, before this phone call, um, in the past, I had applied for a position and it was an advisor position in the career development department. Um, I want to say it may have been with the entertainment business. I'm, I'm assuming it wasn't with film at the time, uh, but that was the position that was available. So I went in for that interview, didn't get it. So cool. I you know moved on. I uh, wasn't a good fit for them. All right. And so Full Cell happened to be calling me now. I'm just like, why is Full Cell calling me? This is interesting. And so, of course, I answered the phone. It's my amazing advisor, who's also my mentor still today. Um, He pretty much um, 
spoke with me about a position that was open on his team. All right. So he was the head, of course, of the film team at the time. And he had a position that was open and he thought I would be a great candidate for applying for this position. All right. Didn't promise me the position just yet. But he said, you know, he kind of encouraged me like you should apply for this. You would be a great candidate. And I was like, okay, oh, man, I'm just looking at myself. And, and, And in a sense, the way he was saying it was like, if I want this position, it's it's pretty much mine. I just got to apply for it and do the interview. And so I'm like, OK, this is like it just caught me off guard. I'm like, <laughs> I'm just like, can, can I call you back tomorrow? And this is this is this is my wonderful advisor at the time and my mentor now. OK, I'm like, can I call you back? I'm gonna just say his name, Jamie Hopper. You know, I love you, brother. Um, And so I said, Jamie, can I call you back? Please, you know, tomorrow um, I got to pray about this. That's what I told him. I said, I got to pray to God about this because this is just this came out of nowhere. It really did. And I'm just like, I just finished my certification, but this is the dream job. You know, this is what I've been waiting on. And so he said, all right, Ron, call me first thing tomorrow. You pray and then call me first thing tomorrow. (laughs) I was like, "Okay, okay." And so that night I just went home. I was just really on cloud nine. I was like, I can't believe you're doing this, God. I just finished my certification. And just like I was saying, I finished the certification. Watch God move me on. This was the perfect fit for me because I just I just got into the entertainment business master's program, too. So it's just like a Man, I get to be out, you know, I get to be on campus working actually for the school, um, have my film degree from Full Sail. And now I have entertainment business masters that I'm going after. So it was just it was a no brainer. And then, of course, this job is totally um, the opposite of what I'm doing, you know, working, you know, for for middle school, you know, because middle school, I tell everybody, you can work with middle school students, you can work with anybody. <laughs> All right. So this was just kind of like a whole different experience. So, of course, I called Jamie the next morning. And guess what? I took that position. All right. Well, I applied for the position. OK. And I uh, told him I was interested. They had me come in for an interview to meet the team. Um, and of course, he spoke highly of me and um The rest was history. I got hired not too long after that, if not the same day. Um, And I was moving on to uh, moving forward to start my career at Full Sail. Uh, Wow. In the career development department. All right. So that was just truly amazing. It was truly a blessing uh, to be able to now be at Full Sail. And and what an awesome department to start in uh, with the career development team. I I still call them my family over there because they're just it was truly amazing. The bond we had. All right. So working with them, work with them for probably about two years. Um, I started to get really like, man, I'm, I'm ready to kind of, I'm ready for something else. You know, I love what I do here, but I'm ready for something else. Um, I started kind of looking into education more and I, I always give this, uh, show credit for doing this. I saw Viola Davis and how to get away with murder and what she was doing with her students, where she would teach them during the day. They're working on cases on her cases that she had. And I was just like, that's amazing to be able to teach your students pretty much from some of the cases that you're working on teaching them and then having them work on some of those cases, some of your great top students. And I was like, I would love to do that. Have, you know, teach my students, everything I know about filmmaking and writing and directing and then have them work on some of the productions that I'm doing. I'm just like, this is, that would be a dream. You know what I'm saying? And this is how I'm feeling in this moment. And, um, kid you not a position ended up opening up. Okay. Um, not too long after that, it was probably like two years. Of course, I was working with career development, uh, position opened up in the education department. And I read this position. And the reason why I stood out was because it, it was me. It was like the description was me. It described me exactly to the point where I took that to my manager over at career development at the time and, you know, was telling her, Sharon, I just wanted to kind of, in a sense, get her blessing, let her know, hey, I saw this position. I'm really interested in applying for it. You know, I feel like this is this position is for me. And she read the description. She read the title of the position. She was like, run you would be crazy not to apply for this position. This is you. You know, this description describes exactly who you are and what you do. And so that was just like, wow, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and 
I was just like, God don't did it again. He just did it again. Again, two years, y'all. <laughs> two years, y'all. Uh, after two years, you know, it was just another two year blessing that came in. So I applied for that position. Um, it was a little journey getting into the position, but um, I was definitely a candidate that they really were interested in. Um, ended up interviewing for it. Had to go through some different um, um, situations and different things that I had to go through just to kind of um, get everything in order to move forward with that position. But once that situation um I was able to get everything done that needed to be done. It was a smooth transition right into it because I was already in the system. And so that was just kind of like, whoa. So now I'm in the education department um, working for the digital cinematography program. And I literally, they threw me right to the sharks. They're like, all right, time to get to work. <laughs> and so I learned everything I had to learn. And, you know, it took some time to get used to everything and just the way they do things compared to the uh, career development side of things. But um, once I started to get the swing of it, it just got better and better. And the rest is history. So, wow, right? That was just like, just thinking about that, you know? So, again, you see how God has moved in my life. Um, and a lot of times I wasn't necessarily standing still, but now as I'm older, um, and in this place that I'm in now, um, with a family and stuff, you know, it's very noticeable when God wants you to stand still. Um, it's to the point now that I don't even, and I, I was telling my wife this, I don't even bother looking for jobs, even though I'm itching sometimes to look for, Hey, I want to work on some other gigs, you know? And even today I was like, I want to work. I want to, I want to see what kind of gigs are out there. Um, and so, because right now it's kind of like I'm in this standing still season again, you know, um, where I'm just pretty much waiting. And I started to think about this um, with another interview, of course, with the great Roy Williams Jr. If y'all haven't checked that out, check that interview out. Um, Roy and I was just talking about this. It's kind of like, you know, being both being, you know, fathers here on earth. Um, we have this time that God allow us to have with our children. You know what I'm saying? And so that's how I feel right now. God has allowed me and my wife to have this time with our children. And so we're in this season where it's just kind of like we don't know what's coming, where we're going, <laughs> what's going to happen. Uh, but we're in this season where we know God wants us to stand still until he's ready to transition us on to bigger and better things. And so in this season, we're taking advantage of that time and we're trying to focus on, hey, this is what God wants. He wants us to focus on our children. He wants us to get these podcast episodes out there. He wants us to encourage the world more. He wants us to lean more towards him. He wants us to trust him more um, with everything. And so you just really got to start thinking about what is it that God wants you to learn while you're standing still. All right. So that's the big thing. So on our discussion side of things, learning how to stand still. It's not easy. I'm still learning it. So I can't even tell you, hey, I got it figured out. No, I don't. I don't think any of us will ever figure it out. It's just, again, we have to learn how to say, hey, God obviously is closing doors for a reason. God obviously is not allowing opportunities to come in for a reason. Um, my wife, since she was um, decided to step away from her career, which can kind of give you kind of the backbone of what's been going on. She stepped away from her career to kind of see um, to be our son, our firstborn. Um caregiver um, because he had a lot of complications at birth. Uh, we knew we had a long journey ahead. She wanted to be here for him. All right. Um, and so naturally, of course, as a husband, it's like, I'm definitely going to support that. So we stepped out on faith um, and allowing my wife to move forward, you know, leaving her career for this season that we're in. And so naturally as a, a spouse, that can be a lot on you. You know what I'm saying? Because now you're having to take on the responsibility of making sure the family has everything they need. Um, whereas more so, my wife was making a lot more money than me as a pharmacist um, because she's a pharmacist. She was making a lot more. Um, and so that that's the faith journey. We did it. And trust me, it was not an easy journey. And we're still going through it. Be, stay tuned for the stories we have to tell, the movies, the shows that we're going to have to share with the world. Um, but God has been here. He's been 
keeping us. And it's to the point now, you know, of course, we don't been through our season. Our son has been through several surgeries. He's good now. He's great. God has got him. We have two more kids now as well. So we've been through this season and to the point that now my wife is like itching to get back to work. Um, and so I have to tell her and remind her, it's kind of like if God wants you to have a job, my love, he will send it. And it's not going to be just a job. It's going to be something that it will be hard for you to say no. And it will fit right into our schedule that we have in place. All right. Right now, a lot of the jobs are either overnight. Some of the jobs are just crazy hours during the day. It would literally pull her away from the family. She won't get that much time with the kids. And so, again, standing still, it hurts sometimes um, because you're just trying to figure out, like, I need to help out more. I want to help out more. I want to be able to do more. But when you have when you learn how to let go and trust God, God is going to take care of all that for you. And when he feels you're ready or it's the perfect time, he's going to send a position that is hard for you to refuse. Look at my story. Right. I had a position that was identical to who I was. I lost one position. He blessed me with the two identical degrees that I had positions for those degrees. And so I've, I'm already a testament of that. I've seen it already. And look now, I'm, I'm having to testify that to my wife, you know, with her journey. You know what I'm saying? And so, but that's just who God is. If God wants us to leave a position, he's going to make it hard for us to stay. And he's going to pretty much, if we don't leave the position, he's going to find a way to kick us out of that position um, if we can't step out and do it, if it's really what he wants for us to do. Just as well, if he has a position for us, he is going to send that position and he's going to make sure it looks colorful, beautiful and and just all the things that your heart desires. Um, He's going to make sure it has all those qualifications and qualities. So it'll be hard for you to say no. All right. So that's just who God is. I've seen it with my own eyes. <laughs> All right. Um, so next point, remember what God has already done. And that's exactly what I was just saying. Um, a lot of times we go through things in life. Uh, we don't know why we go through them, but God brings us through them. And it's our job to share that. You know, it's, it's our job to share more of that into the world. We live in a world now that they just they just drive on fear. They drive on negative energy. They drive on stress. They drive on all the negative things that are going in the world. We need to hear more positive things. That's a, that's what's going to encourage us to move forward. Right. We don't want to be dealing with all this negative energy. Um, look at the news now. It's kind of like everything is just kind of just it's all the bad stuff. You know, we don't never hear all the good stuff that's going on in the world. All right. So we have to share more of that good stuff. So whatever God is doing in your life, you have to share it. You have to share it with the world because we need that stuff. I need to hear it. You know, I need to be encouraged just like you may need to be encouraged. So we have to continue to share those things. All right. So remember what God has already done. Share that with the world. Lean on that. Even in your your waiting time where you're basically waiting on God, you're standing still. Remember what he's already done. I'm in a place now when it comes to standing still for me. I haven't been able to produce a production. I'm in a production now. I've been telling you all about is actually premiering. Um, I don't know if this episode, it may be uh, before this episode releases, but this has pretty much lit the fire. This production that I'm, I'm a part of and I'm dancing in it. Um, I'm, I'm doing some imitating of singing <laughs> in it. OK. Um, and then I'm also acting in it. So this is lit the fire to get back on stage. And then guess what? My parents do. I can't wait till my son get another show up. So, you know, that lit the fire. <laughs> All right. If nothing else did. And so this is pretty much what things that, that are inspiring me to keep going, to hold on more. All right. I haven't done a production in a while of my own. I haven't been in a production in a while. So being able to be a part of a production, I'm able to hold on to those memories even longer. All right. So that lights the fire. Um, next point, letting go of your worries and concerns never will be easy. All right. It's never been easy to do that. I still struggle with it. I still struggle. I, I have been doing really great with anxiety. Um, God has been pretty much this year. I was just like, I don't want to be on no inhaler. I don't want to be on anything, any pills, even the natural pills. I don't want it. I just want to be able to focus um, on my mental health and what God has already given me. And I've been doing so well. There's been certain music that I listen to 
that kind of help. If you never heard of it, Alpha Brain is really great when you're trying to focus. It actually really relaxes me too for for when it's time to go to sleep. <laughs> but I'm hearing that I don't know if it's always great to sleep with, um, you know, listening to it. But um, Alpha Brain music is is really great, you know, you know, to to gear your focus when you're trying to focus. Um, and so there's a lot of great things out there that kind of help, you know, with that stress and that anxiety as well. A lot of great music for that. Um, but yeah, you got to tap into that. I've been doing a lot of research, but this past weekend, you know, that I'm recording this session, we were celebrating one of my sister's birthday. Um, uh, and I happened to, you know, getting the kids ready cause they all had got up. My wife was getting breakfast ready and everything else ready for them. And so I just started getting them all ready. So I'm rushing, boom, 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 getting them ready, getting myself ready. Um, rush downstairs. And now I'm running late. Um, to, to our breakfast brunch for my sister's birthday. And so right away, I'm feeling so stressed. I'm feeling stressed because I was like, I don't like being late. I don't want to be late for this, but I have to go. And anxiety just hit me just again, just that quick. I hadn't dealt with it in like months, y'all. Okay. I haven't dealt with it in months. I have been coping with it, have been able to, to really calm myself down when things would kind of get up there. But this particular day, it hit me so hard and and it was on the way. And I hate when I'm in the car. So I'm on the way to drive into this place. Uh, and so I had to end up using my pump, you know, my inhaler, you know, and on the car ride. And I just felt so I felt terrible. I was like, I got off of this freaking pump. Good thing it was in the car. And so I got that pump and I was able to you know, pump it, got over where I needed to be, but was still dealing with that. And I dealt with it a couple of days but it had calmed down here and there just to give me enough to get over to where I needed to go. And then, of course, you know, I was just off and on dealing with it a couple of days. But it happens. You know what I'm saying? We stress about stuff that don't even matter. And this is like when when it comes to the family meeting together, usually most of the family is late anyway. <laughs> it's just it's, it's usually not me. That's why I was probably stressing. But half of my family were late to the event that we were going to for brunch. And it was just kind of like, you're looking at, why was I stressing? They're late anyway. But that's, that's what we do to ourselves. We have to learn how to just let things go and just let it be, you know? And sometimes God is just allowing you to be late for a reason. You know what I'm saying? Have you ever thought about that? Sometimes God is allowing you to be late for a reason. All right. So you have to kind of lean on that too. You don't know if it was a car accident down the road, God is protecting you from. And so things happen and it is, it happens all the time. The spiritual world is always busy um, protecting us. All right. Um, So, the next point on my list would be the distractions. All right. So, of course, in this waiting season, you, it's, it's going to be so many distractions. All right. You have to find a way to stay focused on what the purpose is God has for you in this standing still season. Distractions are going to come at you. Distractions are going to be there. Um, and you just got to kind of focus. Make sure you stay focused on that. Stay away from things that kind of distract you on what's your purpose and what you need to be focused on. All right. So stay away from distractions as much as possible. I know it's easier said than done, okay, because I deal with a lot of distractions. Um, But if you can just kind of, of course, gear your attention to what God has already done, focus on that and what you can be doing now. What will God want you to do now? Okay, Um, that's a great question as well. All right. Holding on to your faith. All right. And that's waiting season. It's hard, right? It's hard to stay faithful. Okay. It's hard to stay faithful. It's hard to say, Hey, I'm going to trust you, God, through this. It's hard. It's not easy. It's not supposed to be easy. All right. But you have to let go and trust God. He will show you, um, you know, he will show you like why you should be trusting him. All right. He will get you through and he will start to show you more. He's going to show you more things that he's doing in your life the more you trust him, right? So it's it's definitely hard, but you can do it. You can get through it. Um, it definitely builds your faith. It builds your trust in God as well. Um, and that's something that we're definitely learning on our end. All right, standing strong for your family. All right, so that's the biggest thing that I deal with, standing strong for my family. You know, a lot of things happen. I can't allow my family to see me broken. I can't allow my family to see me you know, crying, you know, but not in tears. You know, I have to stay strong for my family. Uh, one of my, uh, I say spiritual mothers, cause she always taking care of me uh, when she see me. And it's always great just to connect with her whenever I go shopping um, um, at this particular store. Um, she told me 
Um, if even if you have to boohoo cry in the shower, you know, <laughs> let that thing go. You know what I'm saying? So, um, so yeah, so that's one thing you have to learn to stand strong for your family, especially your kids. You can't let them see you. You know, because your kids feeds off feeds feeds off your energy, and naturally you feed off of their energy because they're great. They're one of the great distractions, you know, in that staying still season. Just leaning into your kids and your spouse, and just letting them take your mind away from those things. All right, so you got to stand strong for your kids, stand strong for your your spouse. Make sure they're good because they're going to probably need. You need to keep that communication and, and let them know what's going on so you all can work together and keep each other lifted. All right. Trust in God. All right. So that's that uh, final point on the discussion side of things. Just trust in God. That's ultimately what God wants. He wants you to trust him and let things go and know that he's going to get you through it. He already has the story written. All right. Your story is already written. All right. You just got to let God direct your past. I mean, look at the nuggets there. All right. Thank you, Lord, for that. All right. Now I have some questions before we wrap it up. I have some questions I want you to kind of consider. All right. So first question, are you in a season where you're standing still? Are you in a season where you're standing still? I've told you I'm in a season that I'm standing still. My wife is in a season that she's we're both standing still in this season. All right. We don't know what's coming. We don't know what's going, <laughs> but we know God is going to see us through. All right. God is going to see us through. And ultimately, everything that we're going through, we get to share it with the world. That's the beautiful part about it. You know what I'm saying? Um, something came up this week and I'm just like, um, so, you know, and the enemy is busy. The enemy always trying to get you to remember the things that are going on out there um, to steal you away from what God is doing. Isn't that crazy? The enemy is always constantly bringing things up that don't already happen or bringing things up that this recently happened just to remind you of all the bad things that are going on around you. And so you really got to, and that's the distractions, you know, you got to kind of stay away from those distractions because the enemy is just definitely coming at you, especially if God got a special purpose of your, over your life. The enemy is going to be trying to distract you. And I've been, I'll tell you, I've been getting distracted in so many ways. It's scary. <laughs> like why do you keep bothering me? You know what I'm saying? So, but this week um, something came up. And um, I remember telling my wife of something that just came up. I was just like, can't believe this going on. Um, can't go into too much details just yet. Of course, you know, we're going to write that story. Um, but I'm like, can't believe this going on. But my exact comment after that was like, it's more juice for my story. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's how you got to think about it. It's more juice for my story. Um, and so that's that's how I deal with things. You know what I'm saying? When things come up, yeah, I sometimes stress about it. Sometimes I get a little anxious and try to fix things, but then ultimately God showed me that, Hey, it's already under control. Um, but guess what? I get to share that story. You know, I get to share that story with the world. All right. Um, next question for you. How can you let go and trust God with that situation today? So if God has you standing still, how can you let it go and just trust him with everything? All right. So think about that. How can you let it go? All right. Easier said than done, as I tell you. All right. Easier said than done. But eventually, the more you do it, the easier it gets. All right. The easier it gets. OK, so just consider that. Um, have you talked to God about this situation? All right. I'm often saying that because God wants that relationship with us. All right. We he, I always say to come in and it is amazing how it flows from my mouth. Now, me and my wife will always say this, that God is always faithful to us, but we're not always faithful to him. And you'll hear it. You hear it a lot. All right. We're not always faithful to him. Not nearly as much as he's faithful to us. All right. So build that relationship with God. Talk to him in this standing still season. Um, I always heard the rumor and I don't always do this, but I heard the rumor. If you can't sleep at night, God wants to talk to you. <laughs> you know, I don't ever think about that because I'll be trying to go to sleep. I'll be so tired. But God wants to talk to you. You know, you can't sleep at night. All right. It could be you just. Got a lot on your mind, too. So guess what? You should talk to God about that stuff. All right. I'm talking to myself right now. I know. All right. Um, next question for you. How? Oh, excuse me. Have God given you an answer or sign yet? Like, you know, this standing still season, has he given you an answer or a sign? I know with me, I think the sign just come more so with the children. Um, we're just so busy with three little ones. So um, that's pretty much kind of like, a, you know, it's kind of like, a, I know this is what God wants us to be doing because, you know, he's already given me a career that I can kind of balance 
you know, this lifestyle with what I'm, I'm so grateful, thankful. Um, and he's given us businesses that we can actually grow in this season as well. And so the children right now, they need us, you know what I'm saying? And, um, and it's busy. It's very busy. All right. So, um, I'm always thinking about that. Like, thank you God for giving me the position that I have, um, to be able to be here for my family and still be able to get the work I need to do done. But I'm able to also be here for my family for everything that needs to be done here as well. All right. Um, so that's how I know, you know what I'm saying? It's just all the surgeries, everything that we've been through. Um, I know, you know, and it's a hard balance, you know, in that season, in the season, it's hard to balance everything, but it's something that's making me stronger for the future. All right. Um, what can you be doing to prepare yourself while you wait? All right. So this is a big question for you. So what can you be doing to prepare yourself while you wait? You could be writing. Maybe you want to write a book. You can be writing that book. You want to maybe you want to open up a restaurant. Maybe you can do a cookbook while you're waiting. You know what I'm saying? Um, so what can you be doing right now? All right. Maybe you want to encourage people to eat better, you know, when it comes to their health and lifestyle. Maybe you can start that podcast. I'm talking to my wife right now. <laughs> right. See how I put that in there. All right. Um, or maybe you can start that online, um, start doing online lectures, you know, to encourage people to eat better and talk about that and the benefits. So whatever it is you're supposed to be doing right now um, in this standing um, still season, start doing that. You know, talk to God about that. See where he leads you um, and ask him to bless the, the work that he wants you to do in this waiting season. OK, um, and I know I need to get back to writing. <laughs> so that's why we got to end these um, um, take a break from RD2 podcast because this this be my writing now. All right. It takes my writing time. All right. But I love it. You know, I love you all. All right. Um, let's see. So what can you reflect on to give you courage to hold on while standing still? So what things in your past that God has already done for you? Can you hold on? In those moments, I know I've been blessed to produce several films. I've been blessed to produce several plays. And so I'm always holding on to those memories. You know, if God did it back then, man, just imagine what he's going to do next. That's what I'm always telling myself. All right. Um, so what can you do to hold on? I have my movie posters up on the wall, you know, upstairs by my movie room. Um, so I'm, I'm able to see those every day. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes I just stare at them. I have my old um, DVDs for my plays. Um, I have all my film DVDs. All the, Some of the films are on YouTube, you know, so I'm constantly able to go and, and look at those items and, and or those films and those projects. And I'm able to reflect on that situation that God allowed us to do. All right. So figure out ways that you can reflect on um, those things as well on your end to keep you encouraged. All right. Uh, final question. If God ended the wait today. All right. I did this on the brutal wait. All right. It's the same question. If God ended the wait today, would you be ready? And I, I was telling you um, in this episode, as well as the last that I, I got, I got nervous when I, when I brought this question up to, um, for myself, you know, I got a little nervous cause I'm just like, it, it does. It, it, it it's, it's kind of like you want it so bad, but then God gives it. And I know I've experienced this a lot of times and I want something so bad. God gives it to me. And I'm just, I don't even know how to receive it. You know what I'm saying? Like, isn't that something you want it so bad? And God said, here you go. All right, there you go. And you don't even know how to receive it. All right. You just numb because you just couldn't believe God just blessed you with something that you desired. All right. So think about that. Right. If God was to end the wait, would you be ready or would you be numb? And <laughs> not like, why did you do this, Lord? You know what I'm saying? So think about that. It's time to start preparing yourself to be ready. So when God does it, you already know how to move forward. All right. So I pray and hope this podcast episode bless you as it bless me i am just truly grateful for you all thank you for listening for this whole time thank you for listening thank you for supporting ronald dills the second podcast it is truly an honor and a blessing to be able to share the great work god is doing in my life i can't wait to get some more projects back up y'all you just don't understand i can't wait to offer jobs to the wonderful, amazing crew God is putting in place for me. I can't wait to offer jobs to the wonderful actors God is putting in place for me to work with. I'm just super excited at what God is doing. All right. And that is what I'm holding on to. What can you hold on today? All right. What can you hold on to today? All right. Blessings. Thank you for tuning in again. Until the next time. Blessings. <laughs>
Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of the Ronald Dilsta II Podcast. I hope this episode blessed, inspired, and encouraged you on your career journey. We have so many great episodes in store, so make sure you stay tuned. In the meantime, I pray that God blesses your career. May he bless the work of your hands and all he has for your future. Take care and be blessed.